Virginia has been becoming more and more democratic for years now. They voted for the first black president and the first black faced governor. So everyone expected them to elect another democratic governor. But Virginia had other plans. Republicans reign. Glenn Youngkin, the projected winner in Virginia's high stakes battle for governor, a stunning reversal in a solidly democratic state. Alrighty, Virginia, we won this thing! narrowly defeating his Democratic opponent, former Governor Terry McAuliffe, in a state President Biden won by 10 points just one year ago. That is why uh, there on the, in the Oval Office, there's a big red warning light uh, flashing right now after what happened in Virginia with the Republican winning. Could be a red flag for the upcoming midterms for Democrats. Oh, okay, okay. I know there were a lot of factors here, but, but whatever this was, this, that definitely didn't help. I mean, I guess you know what they say, dance like nobody's voting for you. And what's especially shocking about this result is that Joe Biden won Virginia by 10 points just a year ago. That is a huge swing, people. That's like a Kim Kardashian going from Kanye to Pete Davidson level swing. Now, on the one hand, this is just one race to lead one state. Please don't get me wrong. But as you heard, it could also be a bellwether of the things to come in the midterms next year. You know, the same way your girlfriend's saying, that guy's cute, is a bellwether that you're gonna be single soon. So, why did Democrats do so badly in Virginia last night? Well, it depends on who you ask. This is a major defeat for the Democratic Party. Yes, it's a referendum on President Biden. The voters are, you know, disappointed in Biden, angry at Biden, distressed about what other things they see about inflation. The problem with, with Democrats is they made this about Trump, and Trump was not on the ballot. Youngkin cut into McAuliffe's margins in Democratic strongholds by focusing on education, including the controversial critical race theory. There's no doubt that critical race theory is a weapon that he uh, utilized to great effect. The messages tonight is, is that the liberal policies that are being pushed right now through Washington are not necessarily very successful. This is not a referendum on liberal versus progressive versus moderate in the Democratic Party. This is a referendum on the fact that they haven't gotten anything done. Oof, all right, it would be bad enough if Democrats had one reason they lost, but they have like 50. I mean, it's Biden's unpopularity, it's worries about the economy, it's the fact that the pandemic is still hanging around like the Tootsie Rolls three weeks after Halloween, and then there's strategy problems. I mean, Democrats kept trying to fire up their base by making this race about Donald Trump. But here's the thing, Trump wasn't running. Honestly, Democrats, you should enjoy this break from Trump while you can, because after he wins in 2024 and declares himself emperor, you'll be running against him forever. And on the Republican side, I mean, there's no denying that Glenn Youngkin's fear-mongering about critical race theory also played a role. And honestly, this, my friends, this is where Republicans really excel. I mean, they set the agenda. They know how to play the game. Because a year ago, if you asked anyone what critical race theory was, they'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But if you ask them now, they'll be like, I still have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm terrified of it. And it's not just critical race theory. Republicans have been doing this for decades and they are great at it. Everything America fights about, they start it. All these culture wars. The trans people want to use your bathroom. The gays want to defile marriage. There's a war on Christmas. They're trying to kill Santa. Dead people and illegal immigrants are voting. It's all them, smart. What you need to understand is, if they can set the agenda, then they can choose the fight. Like if I'm gonna fight Floyd Mayweather, I'm not gonna choose to fight him in the ring. I'm gonna choose to fight him in a spelling bee, yeah. And then we'll see who the greatest of all time is, champ. C-H-A-M-P, champ. I mean, for the most part, Democrats don't wanna engage in those culture wars because they think that they can win on policy alone. But where that plan falls apart is that they're not getting anything actually done. Cause all their ideas are tied up in infighting and bickering. And that makes a difference makes a huge difference in messaging because when Republicans say, Democrats are teaching your kids that white people are all bad, what can Democrats say? No, we're not doing that. Okay, then what are you doing? Well, right now we're trying to get you six weeks of paid leave. Huh? 
What? No? Zero weeks? Okay, no paid leave, but we are getting you free college. Huh? What's that? No, no, okay, no free college, but we are raising taxes on rich people. What's that? No? Oh, we're cutting the taxes on rich people. And that's the Democrat promise. She has a simple message to the Democrats. You can come with all the nice ideas in the world, but if you can't make the changes that you promised, then best believe voters are gonna make some changes of their own. Virginia's Democratic governor, Ralph Northam, admitted to being one of the people in this old yearbook photo, right? But he didn't say which person he was. And I don't blame him, because neither option is good. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you're taking a trip and your only choices are the Titanic and Spirit Airlines, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least on the Titanic, you might get to <laughs> Leo, but I mean... <laughs> Although I will say, I suppose admitting to blackface is actually worse. Yeah, because then everyone's mad at you. But if you say you're a clan member, now you're part of a community. <laughs> there's, there's an upside. <laughs> you know what the real shame is? Is that if these weren't costumes and it was a black guy and a clan member having a drink together, this would be a huge step forward. <laughs> Racial harmony, we did it, folks. <laughs> but because it was costumes, it's extremely offensive. And to his credit, Governor Northam came out and he apologized for being in the photo. To his uncredit, he took it back the next day. Northam now backtracking. The governor saying that after a closer look, it's not him, but he does admit to wearing blackface at one point in the past. My belief that I did not wear that costume or attend that party stems in part from my clear memory of other mistakes I made in this same period of my life. That same year, I did participate in a dance contest in San Antonio in which I darkened my face as part of a Michael Jackson costume. <laughs> Yo, this guy's a legend. I'm sorry. His new defense is that he knows he didn't do this blackface because he clearly remembers doing a different blackface. <laughs> Although it, it does make it more believable that it wasn't him in the photo because who would defend themselves by admitting to a different crime? <laughs> Your Honor, I couldn't be the Boston Strangler because I'm the Philadelphia Strangler! <laughs> Go Eagles! Ah! <laughs> Although... <laughs> Although what's, what's especially strange is that it took Northam a day to remember that he wasn't in this photo. <laughs> like, if someone asks you if you were ever in blackface or dressed as the KKK, it's never a good sign if your answer starts with, uh... <laughs> and still, and still, Credit to Governor Northam for coming out, you know, clean about a different time that he did blackface <laughs> for a Michael Jackson impression. Although again, uncredits, once he started sharing the details. I'll tell you exactly what I did. I had uh, the shoes, I had a, a glove, uh, and I used just a little bit of shoe polish to put under my, or on my cheeks. And the reason I used a very little bit is because I don't know if anybody's ever tried that, but you cannot get shoe polish off. But, but it was a, it was a, a dance contest. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. How did he already know it's hard to get the shoe polish off your face? Because at first, it sounded like he made a mistake. Now it sounds like he's a blackface connoisseur. Now, some might prefer charcoal, but I've always been a shoe polish kind of guy with just a hint of soot for texture. Oh, and also, uh, just a little tip for anyone planning on doing a Michael Jackson impression. Uh, if you're wearing the sparkly shoes and the gloves and you're doing the moonwalk, that's good enough. <laughs> we get who you are. No one's gonna be like, is he Lady Gaga? Who is that? <laughs> so whether or not Governor Northam was in that yearbook photo or not. We do know he definitely did blackface at some point. We also know he should definitely hire someone to speak for him. You said that the competition in San Antonio was a dance competition? Yes. And it was that you danced the moonwalk? That's right. Are you still able to moonwalk? Oh. Uh, <laughs> inappropriate circumstances. My wife says inappropriate circumstances. <laughs> Yo, wait, wait. Wait, yo. Wait, all right. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This guy was about to moonwalk. No, because he was looking around like, well, I normally need like five feet to get momentum, I, uh, you know? 
I can't believe this guy was actually gonna do the moonwalk in the middle of his blackface apology. <laughs> that is the wrong time for dance moves, okay? That would be like if Bill Clinton said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> and also, props to Northam's wife, because clearly that's not the first time she's had to stop him <laughs> from showing his moonwalking skills off, right? He probably does this all the time. He's probably at funerals like, how about now? No, no, not appropriate. <laughs> And now, not appropriate. He's like the Groot of moonwalks. That really, moonwalk? No, no moonwalk. Moonwalk? No moonwalk. <laughs> and look, and look, Governor Northam seems to be showing genuine remorse about this weird racist phase of his life. But many are saying it isn't enough to be sorry now. You should have known it was a problem all along. Do you think as a grown adult that, that it's uh, problematic that you need to have it explained to you that blackface is offensive? No, I, you know, I'm not a person of color. And, and people of color uh, experience different things. Uh, it affects them different ways. That's right, I'm not a person of color. But if you give me two minutes... <laughs> Billy Jean, not my nun. On election day, control of Virginia's state legislature came down to a single delegate race. And that race in the 94th district ended in an exact tie between Democrat Shelley Simons and Republican David Yancey. But instead of having another vote or a runoff or letting that psychic octopus choose the winner, (laughs) they chose to put the two candidates' names in a ceramic bowl and leave it up to Lady Luck. As I said, I will draw one canister. Madam Vice Chair will draw a second canister. The winner will be in the first canister. (laughs) Madam Vice Chair, if you will pull your canister. And the bowl is empty. (laughs) The winner of House District 94 is David Yancey. And the second name for the other candidates Shelly Simons. Democracy. (laughs) I'm sorry, but right now, Russians are probably watching this going, how do we even interfere with this? (laughs) It's too stupid, what do you do? (laughs) A lot of people said Governor Northam must step down, right? Give the job to Virginia's Lieutenant Governor, Justin Fairfax, next person in line. But then it came out that Fairfax has a very serious sexual assault allegation against him. So then everyone started looking at the next person in line, State Attorney General Mark Herring. And now we're back to square one. And we have breaking news out of Virginia with the state's governor still in hot water. The Attorney General now, Mark Herring, is now apologizing for wearing blackface in college. The Democrat issued this statement in 1980 when I was a 19-year-old undergraduate in college. Some friends suggested we attend a party dressed like rappers. We dressed up and put on wigs and brown makeup. This was a one-time occurrence, and I accept full responsibility for my conduct. Another Virginia politician was in blackface? Enough, like at some point, you start wondering, are there any real black people in Virginia? <laughs> like, honestly, if I'm a black guy in Virginia, I'm doubting myself right now. Someone would be like, hey, this you? You'd be like, I don't know, man, I don't know. <laughs> so the governor did blackface, the attorney general did blackface, and it only gets worse because the next person in line for the job is the house speaker. Yeah, and he's an actual can of brown shoe polish. <laughs> One of the hardest things to do in America is pass an amendment to the Constitution. It's harder than shooting a porno on the Amtrak quiet car. (laughs) Because you see, in order to be added to the Constitution, the amendment needs to pass in the House, needs to pass in the Senate, and be ratified by 38 states. And how can you get 38 states to agree on anything? I mean, think about it. You can't even get states to agree on potato salad. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, if you show up to an Atlanta cookout with raisins, the only thing getting barbecued is your ass. In fact, it's so tough to get through this crazy process that it's been 30 years since the Constitution has been amended. But this week, Virginia may have gotten America one step closer to a new amendment. 
USA Today reports Virginia became the 38th state to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. The Equal Rights Amendment was first introduced to Congress in 1923. It took 49 sessions to finally get it passed in 1972. The ERA, as it's known, reads, Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Wow! Women are now equal in America. <laughs> Also, also, wow, women are now equal in America? Because, I mean, that statement sounds good, but it doesn't make you feel good. It would be like if Popeyes came out saying, great news, from now on, our chicken sandwich is 100% real chicken. And you'd be like, wait, what was I eating before? Don't ask, don't ask. Shut up, get in the box. But don't get too excited just yet, because it turns out that amendments are like avocados. They only last for so long. Is it too late for the Equal Rights Amendment to become law? The Office of Legal Counsel says it's simply too late for the ERA, pointing out the deadline was in 1982. Five states that ratified the ERA decades ago have since rescinded those votes. We have word that there will certainly be court challenges. Whether or not it holds it up or not is the question. Okay, no, I'm sorry, hold on. So they've been trying to pass this Equal Rights Act for women since the 1920s. They finally get enough states, but now it may not count because they missed some arbitrary deadline. Who, who puts a deadline on women's rights, huh? <laughs> who, who's this, like Cinderella's fairy godmother? <laughs> huh? Yeah, because she was an asshole with her rules. Be home by midnight or you'll die alone. <laughs> it's like, what the hell, grandma? I'm trying to smash a prince. <laughs> And you're gonna turn my carriage into a pumpkin? What if I'm doing 50 on the freeway? You're gonna kill me. <laughs> this is some bippity boppity bullshit. <laughs> Cause really, it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Just because the law is a little bit late doesn't mean the whole thing has to be scrapped. Like if you're late for a movie, they don't lock you out of the theater. They let you come in and then your punishment is that you just have to figure out the plot for yourself. Yeah, just be like, why do they look like that? Did a human and a cat have sex? What is this about? <laughs> Voting. It's one of life's little pleasures, you know? Without it, we don't have a say on who occupies the White House, who plays in the All-Star Game, or who wore it best. Because uh, we all know that I did. <laughs> say what you want, Gaga, but I slayed. <laughs> Everyone voted, but I slayed. The point is, the right to vote is enjoyed by many Americans. And now in Virginia, another group is set to join the party. The governor of Virginia is gonna give convicted felons the right to vote. That means every felon in Virginia who's completed his or her sentence, along with any sort of supervised release, will now be eligible to vote and to run for office or serve on a jury. Oh, interesting. Voting and jury duty. <laughs> so, some bittersweet news for an ex-con. <laughs> She's like, I'm free, I can vote! Wait, I gotta serve on a jury? <laughs> Haven't I paid my debt to society? <laughs> now, obviously, there are people who are against giving felons the right to vote, and uh, they do have their reasons. But I don't want convicted felons, even if they've spent their time, I don't want to vote. We're gonna give them the rights back. People that are convicted of felonies or crimes of moral turpitude suggest dishonesty. They have shown a propensity to lie and not be honest, to have a loose relationship with the truth. You know what? She is right. People with a loose relationship with the truth don't belong in a voting booth. Uh, they belong on Fox News. That's, <laughs> that's where they belong. Now, now, you can argue that voting restrictions on felons have their place. I mean, when you commit a crime, you do give up certain rights for a period of time. Much like when you eat sushi at a strip club, for a certain period of time, you give up your rights to solid poop. And that's, <laughs> that's just something you accept. And I mean, really, fish at a strip club? Who came up with that? Have some brains, stick to the chicken fingers. Uh, but there's a key phrase here. It's a period of time. And that time is the sentence. It's how long society has agreed a crime should be punished. It doesn't make sense to keep punishing people after it's over. I mean, even Jay-Z was forgiven by track 11 people. Yeah. And, and there's another reason why these laws are shady. 50 years after the Voting Rights Act, one in 13 adult African Americans cannot vote simply because of felony convictions. This is a major, major way of undermining the strength and power and vibrancy of communities of color and of poor communities of color, and it is the new Jim Crow. It's the new Jim Crow. New style, new haircut, same old racism. <laughs>
Here's how you know that this was designed as a race thing and not a criminal thing. After the Civil War, when the slaves were allowed to vote, all of a sudden, additional laws were created to limit the rights of felons and ex-felons. And just look at that chart. That shows how quickly the states changed their laws to ban ex-felons and felons from voting. You see that? Look at that spike. Look at that spike. If that spike were any more black, it'd have courtside seats to the Knicks games. <laughs> that is a black spike, and that's what they were doing. <laughs> they were open about being racist back then. In fact, back in the 1800s, and this is insane, voting rights in Mississippi were revoked for theft or arson, but not for murder. Because as the Mississippi Supreme Court ruled, black people were given rather to furtive offenses than to the robust crimes of the whites. <laughs> yeah, in other words, black people commit sneaky crimes, whereas white people are good old-fashioned murderers. <laughs> Sounds like a Def Jam joke, doesn't it? It's just like, man, you ever notice how black people do them furtive crimes sneaking around? Yeah, yeah, you got those white people with that robust That's not for judges, that's for jokes. So, even though we know it was a system designed to oppress black voters, can someone please explain to me why you would be against this change? I don't know any reasonable person who looks at our democracy and says, the thing we need is more murderers voting, more rapists voting, more violent criminals voting. I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. Oh, well, you see, Ted Cruz, there are many things that don't make sense. Uh, for instance, your face. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how is it melting and solid at the same time? It's, it's like an almost ripe cheese. What's happening there? Like, these people have served their time. And the logic doesn't make sense. Be because what's the worst thing an ex-con could do with their vote? They can't hurt anyone, because the last time I checked, murder and rape aren't options on the ballot. So literally, the worst thing a felon could do in the booth is vote for Ted Cruz. That's the worst thing they could do. <laughs> And this is the saddest thing about this entire issue. The saddest thing is that it's being politicized when it really shouldn't be. Some Republicans say this is not about justice, but sheer politics. It really is obvious to anybody that's paying attention that this is a direct desire to bring 200,000 new voters that will support Hillary Clinton. Okay, okay, no, now look. Maybe Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe did it for partisan reasons. There's no way to know for sure, and yes, Virginia is a key swing state, you know, this November, and a few thousand votes one way or the other could actually make a difference. But for argument's sake, let's say he did do it for partisan reasons. Personally, I'm fine with that. Because giving citizens their right to vote, especially after they've served their time, is still the right thing to do. Everyone in the world should do the right thing, even if it is for selfish reasons, like Governor McAuliffe did. You could do the same thing. In fact, we should name it after him, people, yeah. Like, you know, if you give to charity just to get a tax deduction, then we say, you're McAuliffe, that's what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> you're giving a homeless person half of your meal because you're actually trying to lose weight? Yeah, McAuliffe, <laughs> that's what you're doing. Or spending a lot of time with your grandmother, but just because she's also your weed dealer, McAuliffe. <laughs> that's what we should be doing. Big news coming out of Virginia. Mike Webb wants to be the next congressman to represent Virginia's 8th district. Probably didn't help his chances today with a Facebook post. He uploaded this screenshot of a map to an event, but he didn't crop it just right. And his internet browser tabs just happened to be for pages titled Tight Booty and Sexy Amateur. <laughs> oh, okay, no, no, wait, wait. Let's not jump to conclusions here, people. We don't know why he had those porn tabs open. Yeah, maybe he was planning his next attack ad, you know? <laughs> like, hi, I'm Mike Webb. As you know, I'm on the record for supporting tight booty. <laughs> My opponent supports loose booty and the soft core stuff where you only see boobs. He's wrong for Virginia and wrong for jacking it. <laughs> it could have been that, you never know, you never know. And, you know, I won't lie, there's something refreshing about this guy, you know? Not only does he support hardworking amateurs, but he's uh, <laughs> clearly trying to give his constituents a new level of transparency. If I'm voting for a politician, I want to know about his tax returns, his voting record, and whether he's into creepy Asian diaper stuff. These are things <laughs> that I want to know. What fascinates me the most about this story is the fact that he had the porn tabs open, <laughs> And then he posted something about his campaign, which begs the question, did he stop? <laughs> did he, was he in the middle and then went, ah, oh, that gives me an idea. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, just, just a thought, just a thought. It's February. 
which as anyone in Virginia can tell you, is Blackface History Month. (laughs) Today, Virginia had its third blackface scandal in a week. There's so much blackface in Virginia. I bet when you go to get your shoes shined, the kid asks you, what are we doing today, mister? The feet are the face. What are we going with? (laughs) This time it came out that when the state's Senate majority leader was editor of his school yearbook in 1968, he filled it with pages and pages of blackface photos, which is disgusting, all right? And also extremely confusing for any of the old alumni who are starting to lose their memories. Because if you're old and you're going through your yearbook and you're just like, oh, wow, I was so young and black back then. I 